Hello everyone, so happy Sabbath. Um, I'm asked to share a testimony. My testimony today is going to be entitled How God Lead Me to Where I Am and to Whom I Am With Now. So, you know, when you're young, in your 20s, you have so many plans, you're starting your career, and you have goal, and you work for it. So, you always pray, help me Lord, guide me, please, thy will be done. But let's face it, we work for our goals and we want, we want it to happen, right? Well, at least for me. After my missionary journey with you in 2005-2006, so I asked myself, what's next what will i do actually there's so many options so as what others mostly do they stay a little longer there in tagaytay teach maybe i can just try public school teaching in schools anyway i have my teaching license prc also receive uh, an offer job in china this base in china so they have a school there and they were inviting me for a two-year contract am i ready for that because you know if you're a missionary teacher you have kind of a lot of restriction sometimes you just don't i i feel like i'm not free to be myself because you know there are so many eyes looking and then you need to bring a light I mean, you need to be a light, something like that. And probably some of you didn't really know, I end up my missionary journey there. Not very good experience. But anyway, I think there is a big reason for that. That's why those other options of staying in Tagaytay or working as a missionary again, continuing with it, wasn't on a top priority for me so yeah i was i finished my missionary journey in a painful heart but i think that everything happened for a reason and i am a very good position right now it probably i stay there longer i might be still there in tagaytay enjoying teaching so i'm just happy to where i am and i believe that god has all the purpose for what's happening to us anyway let's back to our thing so once we are young we're all determined we do our things we pray although we want our things to happen so when so i ended up deciding going to thailand so with my savings i use it most of my saving i just use it to pay a ticket and just try what will be my life there so i bought a ticket for like um one month so if it doesn't work i can just go home but of course my mind is thinking i will make it work so i stay in the hotel for first night and then i went to the church i met some people i have some relatives there and then so after visiting the church in bangkok bangkok international church bic so they gave me an idea the next day just go there because sunday they are very busy because it's a weekend so after that church um i went sunday morning and just go there without any appointment and then just inquire ask if there's availability and then you know what happened they welcome me they're very nice i didn't know that they're really uh, out of teacher i mean they they have a space and so they just asked me to teach right away they observed me and all day that day i already teach so i come to inquire or pass my resume but i started right away and then it was straight i was just working right away so that was just my third day in thailand and i already got a job so i rented and it's good that it's just the center bangkok i have relatives there and there's a, a literature evangelist leader there that 
they have some open room so i shared a room with some other new people there just like me and it went good i have a job on the third day so i feel very lucky god guided me and he kind of boosted my um confidence and yeah i stayed in thailand for five years but when i go to thailand i have the thinking i'm not gonna stay there for long it's just a stepping stone for me because i want to be in america or europe i'm gonna meet a partner or i'll be somewhere in those country so that's my goal why i started and think of going to thailand as a stepping stone to go to a bigger country or meeting my partner in life so so it did not happen the way i wanted so i apply in thailand i mean i applied in canada i have relatives brother in canada so i apply as a nanny or whatever i can do i got denied the next year i try again i save money for the show money and i up and i apply for a tourist visa again i got denied but i'm still willing to continue again whatever i can and then i start meeting with this foreign people but none adventist so oh and then 2010 something bad happened like my father died so a greatest foundation of my life died and i feel so down help helpless and i just okay forget all those dream if i can't go to america if i can't go to canada or cannot meet anyone from europe fine i have to make a life i just have to try to save money and see what will be my life maybe my life will just gonna be here so i was feeling down i already gave up my hope and my plan for the big things in my mind so i start i started just learning thai language and to live there easy because let's face it it's easier than in the philippines making money in the philippines is just so difficult and so i just okay fine i i'll make my life there i study the language i people think i am thai so i'm living really cheap because there's a foreign rate and there's a nash uh, local rate so i look like thai and when you're young you dress up you change your face and when you're beautiful oh that's what they like in thailand and i'm young then okay and then yeah in the in the time that i'm not expecting anything when I stopped doing those online dating, I re out of nowhere, I just received a, me a message from VeggieDate.com. So I met my husband from VeggieDate.com because I have no luck with Adventist dating, single. So I think that it will. I want to be a good wife. I want to cook good food, but I can't cook pork, shellfish, sell selfish shellfish so i went to vegetarian.com and then yeah someone messaged me a really old-fashioned guy a little older than me not very old though and there where it started and it came very fast he said in the message we're just getting to know each other he just said i'm gonna go see you i don't want to waste my time I'll see you and let's see how it goes because well he doesn't have time to waste and same as me we're in the right age so he went to me right away I met him 2011 and then yeah he came and then there was a spark so it continued and then he went to Philippines that fast after a month of meeting me in thailand we went to philippines in a month and then there and then he come and come, and then process all the papers and then after six months i was here right away so fast so our relationship was kind of fast because we're in the right age i'm 29 then he was 40 so yeah i think it was just good and then when i came here 
I didn't know that it is just an hour to the border of Vancouver, Korea. So we Washington and then the border to Canada. And it's just the Vancouver where my family are. I said, oh my goodness. Like I got denied two times in Canada. I'm losing all my hope. And here I am. I was in America, probably a better country for me. And just near to my family. I said, oh really? God works in such amazing thing. Like I am not expecting that. I thought it's far, but a blessing in disguise, it was just an hour or two hours depending on the the traffic. So I can meet, I can visit my family much often. I'm just, I don't know what to say, but I'm just overwhelmed and so happy with how God works to me. I have so many downs, ups, and I went to the point that I already give up my dream or my goal in my life, how I set it up. But God did it in the time I wasn't expecting. Much more to that is He did it greater than what I wanted. I'm probably not meant to be in Canada. I'm probably better than here and I am here and I have a great family here. I have three children. I have my husband is kind is a doctor. We're living a good life. We're very near to the church, very much involved. And every time we move in houses, my husband will always consider church, work and school. And so my my message to us is like and just because we do not see an immediate change doesn't mean god never heard you because he has and we know that god always answer our question not may not be the one we wanted it to be answered but you'll be surprised how he ha he answered is how it should be like so in first john 3 20 it says there god is great and greater than your heart again god is greater than your heart and he knows everything so we just have to keep on trusting him i know that we all know this we just have to believe in god trust in him hold on to him all the time Especially to what is happening right now. It's just terrible. The world is getting worse and worse. But what's important is we have our family. We have our guide. We have our God. We have our faith. We know that this is what really happening in the end of times. And it's gonna be it's going to be worse. But we don't have to be afraid, not unless we are not ready. This is what I'm telling to my children all the time. Even if you see bad things, just be good. Always be good. Don't copy the bad behavior, but always be good. Because that's what I always try to do. Like, be good, be good. Be good to each other, be good to one another. And I think that God is blessing me because I am good. <laughs> no, no, no. Because I choose to be good. So again, God is greater than your heart. And he knows everything. I miss you, Batchmate. And this won't be the first and last. I know I'm gonna be sharing. It's just a time difference. That's why it's hard to um, connect with you together with the Philippine time. But anyway... I don't know. <laughs> so again, have a blessed day today and God is always there for us. We have to believe in his plans. It will be better than what you wanted. Amen.